Morning guys, Pete here, N6QW, and uh, this morning we're going to take a look, it's uh, in the garage and it's kind of cold, uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, work I've been doing with the PMR6A, which is a receiver, portable mobile receiver from Multi LMAC, uh, a company uh, that has long since been out of business that uh, built this equipment in the early 50s, and I think they lasted till about the early 60s when... Uh, uh, sideband kind of took over uh, but this is a, a six band uh, receiver and a relatively small size got about 13 tubes in it and uh, was uh, quite the uh, quite the piece of gear uh, uh, in the time that it came out it was about 135 dollars uh, and uh, 1950s that was a lot of money uh, I acquired this uh, several years ago uh, as a result of uh, someone actually gave me the mating transmitter to this uh, for some work I did for them and uh, uh, so I had the transmitter and I, I searched around and did find the receiver and uh, did acquire the receiver but uh, and I bought some power supply components but never never built the supply and then uh, recently here I got taken with the fact that look I said you ought to do something with it you either ought to fix it or get rid of it so I built the supply and there's a, an earlier uh, video on the uh, PMR6A supply. And uh, right now, as you can see, uh, the design uh, output was 260 volts on the plate. And then there's some other dropping resistors in there to get the uh, uh, voltage down to the uh, screen voltage and some other voltages used in the um, PMR6A. So um, uh, when I built the supply, the no-load voltage was close to 400 and uh, so with the, with the proper load on it uh, and, and providing some bleed, um, it, uh, it is right at 260, which is the, the, the design uh, criteria for the, the supply. Uh, when I first cranked this on, I uh, had a, a very noisy pot. You could hardly hear anything uh, because it was so scratchy. If the volume was loud, it was so scratchy. So I got a little deoxid in there. And this... Uh, And there we are on 75 meter sideband. It uh, tunes 80, 40, 20, 15, 10, and 160 meters in the broadcast band. Um, we, we, we're so accustomed to setting uh, an SI 5351 on a specific frequency, it doesn't move. Uh, these, uh, these receivers moved around a little bit. Uh, I, it's in a cold garage and these things start to warm up the, uh, the there's no covers on it or anything uh, put the covers on it that also be uh, also almost becomes like an oven to keep things kind of warm but everything's out in the open so you get a little uh, get a little drift there's 40 meters and you can tune the broadcast Broadcast stations on AM in the 40 meter band. Pete here, N6QW. There's the BFO. 40 meters is this up band, uh, upper band on the Dow which is really small from a band spread standpoint. Antenna trim. I was copying FT8. And there it is. Uh, put, this, put this into the computer to see if we can decode FT8. Antenna trimmer. LMAC. PMR 6A. Vintage 1953. See the, the radio there. Power supply.
I suspect when operating this, uh, since there was a separate transmitter, you'd keep one hand on the receiver just to tune in the stations. But it does have voltage regulator, voltage regulation on the local oscillator, but uh, uh, still a lot of older components here. I'm sure they drift a bit. Three and a half watts of audio. This uh, came in two versions, the six volt and the 12 volt version. This happens to be the 12 volt and uh, my power transformer didn't have 12 volts on it. So I just bought a 12 volt DC supply right there and that seems to work fine. That also keeps the hum out. Six to an eight. Let's see if we hear anything on twenty. I wonder if you could build a uh, separate sideband transmitter and put this thing on uh, as separates on uh, transmit and receive. Uh, that, that'd be kind of cool. A vacuum tube transmitter and uh, have a little TR in there and operate uh, sideband with a multi LMAC PMR6A for a receiver and a uh, homebrew transmitter. Now that'd be kind of interesting. Antenna kind of tuner, tuner kind of peaks things up. Pete here, N6QW. Pete, uh, you have a That's Mel. Now, I'm copying him down in the CW portion of the band. He's normally, he's... He's normally up here at 170. So the calibration must be off or I'm getting a birdie somewhere. I don't know. He's not too far away from me. W6FDR, Mel. I need to check the calibration on uh, 20 meters. There's some interesting thing you got to do to re re receive AM. I'm not sure what that is. Pete here. Uh, it seems sensitive enough. Uh, probably frequency stability is not what we expect today, but uh, I think we're doing okay. So anyway, this is uh, 
Pete here, N6QW, uh, with the uh, LMAC PMR6A. Now, now in the AM mode. Forty meters. Not bad. Pete here signing off. N6QW, the LMAC PMR6A. Pete here. Got to clean up the controls. BFO. What an amazing piece of engineering. Pete here, N6QW, the PMR6A. We're on 75 meters now. Side bend. How about that? Pete here, N6QW, the multi LMAC PMR6A, <coughs> working. Our power supply, I predicted at about 260 volts, and uh, that's where we're at. And everything uh, worked out pretty well with that. Seventy five uh, eighty meter CW. Hey, I'm pretty excited, pretty stoked. There's the PMR 6A. Pete here, N6QW. So uh, we'll shut it down. We'll see how the uh, parts 260 volts. Wow. Cool. We got it working. Got it working. So fine. N6QW, clear.